Daily Detroit is brought to you by the community. Support our work at patreon.com slash daily Detroit. Hello, friends, and welcome to Your Daily Detroit. We are back from the weekend. It is Monday, February 28th, 2022. I'm Jer Stays, and on the other end of the line is... Fletcher Sharp. Now, we're going to spend a lot of time with Detroit City FC, as we generally do. But there were a couple of sports stories that kind of bleed out into the other things that we cover here at Daily Detroit that I wanted to mention. First off being the situation with the Major League Baseball lockout. And the reason it's of interest to me, not only because, I mean, you know, I, I, I in the past I've been a baseball fan, but the economic impact on downtown Detroit is going to be pretty big when it comes to the lack of people coming by those bars, restaurants, things like that. And now we're at a, a part and an impasse here where we're going to start seeing uh, games canceled, right, Fletcher? Yeah, and that's unfortunate for the economic impact because bi- some businesses exist downtown solely because of the sports teams there. And without the sports teams having games, uh, the ones who are specifically to one team, uh, they all suffer, and that stinks. Personally, I'm kind of 50-50 on it because while I am sad there won't be any baseball as of now and all I am sad those businesses will suffer, I am glad that opening day is not happening. And the reason why I'm glad solely is because people come to the city and trash it as if it's their own backyard and they leave. And then that's, then the, the cleaning up is left to do to the people who still remain. And that's not very fair. And I don't mean this because ah, a lot of great fans who come through and enjoy the game and don't cause any trouble, but there is a section of fan. Like you can't get the idea out of your head. When I live near the ballpark, I remember walking one, opening my door one day after opening day, and there was literally somebody peeing on my door. And like, I, you can't erase that, right? Or how those things kind of happen. So I, I think that I, I understand your point there, but I am sad for uh, baseball fans, although I don't have very much sympathy for the owners right now. Yeah, Sam, I used to live right next to Harmony Park, right in the little triangle there, right next to Harmony Park. Oh, yeah. And we ca- we came outside after opening day, my father and I, when I was little. And there is just some guy just near like the corner, just puking all over the street, just letting it all out. And then he just cleaned himself up and walked away. And I'm like, yo, there's your lunch is in the, you're, you're just going to leave this here in the street for people to disgusting. And it's, and I'm like, what is this? Dad's like, it's opening day. Like, I'm like, what's opening day? It's like the first game, the first series for the Tigers. I'm like, why do people act like this? He's like, because it, they've been waiting for this. And I was like, that makes zero sense to me, but okay. But to your point about the own, yeah, no, shame, shame on them. That's, that's, I understand the players were asking for some really outrageous things, but all the demands so far have seemed to be pretty reasonable. And also shame on some of the media who are like, oh, here comes Max Scherzer driving in his new Porsche convertible with his car. It doesn't matter how much money he makes. He's there to talk for all of the players, not just the ones who make a bunch of money. There are other players too who don't make as much. And the minor leaguers still have their own season and they're still struggling. And I'm sure their demands would like to be heard as well. So come on, like let's, if we really want baseball, then like let's all be agreeable and start agreeing to stuff so we can watch people play. And if we don't want it, then let's just keep doing this mess because. One thing I noticed, though, is that they're still trying to push season tickets in like MLB packages and stuff. I think that renews in a couple of days, those those uh, digital packages. And it's like, but you don't have a product together. Like, I don't I don't like the idea of selling something that you, you when you don't have a good faith idea of when that product's going to be delivered. It's like you might get baseball this week, but why don't you buy tickets just to make sure? And we're not going to refund you either. There's, once those days are skipped, you just gave us the money. So why don't you just give us like that? I, I don't like that. I understand why I'm, I'm sure some people, some people in the, the company weren't thinking. I think they just set some auto reminders as some big, big teams just have to do that or else they'll miss stuff. But like it feels underhanded um, and I don't like underhanded stuff. Same with Major League Baseball, their channel pushing the MLB package to like buy games to watch buy our chat. Why? what is on there right now? Like if I really want to watch some recaps, some old, old games, I'll go to ESPN classics or I'll fire up YouTube. I don't need to pay you money for your channel or for your block of channels. That's showing nothing right now. <laughs> well, we will get to the sport that if there isn't a season will be the biggest pro sport over the summertime here in Detroit in a minute. But first I want to mention the news that Detroit is one of three finalists, apparently reportedly, for the 2024 draft between Green Bay and Washington, D.C. and Detroit. So I'm kind of 
excited about this, again, from the non-sports angle. That many people coming in, you know, you could have a full Ford field for that. People, you know, spending money, hotel rooms, a chance to show off the city. I feel like from the economic point of view, you know, it would be something, something nice to do, you know? I mean, it's great because you... You know the Philadelphia crowd, they're going to travel because they need to boo at something. You know the New York people are going to come and fly in. They're probably going to... The Jets fans will be cheering their draft pick no matter who it is. It could be like a small, timid child. It's like, yeah, draft a nine-year-old. The, <laughs> the Giants fans will boo no matter who it is. It's the reincarnation of LaDainian Tomlinson, but he didn't go... He's not from this school. Boo. So you know you'll get those people to come in. Those guys would probably boo Jesus himself. They will go to like inside of a volcano if the draft is going to be there. They don't care, whatever. And like, honestly, <laughs> ble bless them for it because every city benefits when you have fans like that. And also, the number one overall draft pick will benefit because they'll get to see exactly where he's going to be playing the next year because the Lions <laughs> are going to be terrible next year. So it probably makes sense they should host the draft. Yeah, he doesn't. He could just come to the draft and stay, and then just just stay. You just it's like, hey, the locker room. You could just sleep in here for right now. This is where you're going to be <laughs> next year. So, you know, congrats, man. Good for you. We should know by the end of March at the latest. All right, let's get into Detroit City FC. Last night, I was at the owner's meeting at St. Andrew's Hall. Quite a party. I got to tell you, I like Black Milk. A lot of fun. If you haven't checked him out, if you haven't heard of him, I don't know where you've been at, but uh, go check it out on Spotify. He's got ties to all kinds of like legendary like Detroit acts. It's just a lot of fun. It was actually the first musical act I had seen in person since... 2019. So maybe that's a little bit of the sheen, but it was a really good time and a lot of fun. I had a chance to uh, talk with some fans, which is great. Talk with some listeners. It was wonderful to see you and see the new kits for 2022. You still got the deep red this time with kind of a subtle red on red stripe behind it. You've got the uh, Chevy dealers up in the front. The road jerseys uh, kind of go from the like light goldish maroon to like the pure white. And Nate Steinwasher has gone from green to a powder blue. So, you know, I think they're pretty sharp looking kits. It's interesting to see how the kit evolves. There's also some new merch. One of these days, I would like to get my hands on one of those. Like, I think they have a, a friendly, the dumpster bear pounding a drum on a sweatshirt. That's the one I think I'd want to have. I'm just glad that I know a lot of people have their kit announcements and such, and or they get somehow manufacture someone here to come and show up and be the, like, the face of it. I'm glad that Detroit F city FC got an actual Detroiter who has some national cred and black milk to come back and uh, to help with this. I know there's a connection there. Uh, TJ Winfrey shouts out to TJ shouts out to the Cubs. Uh, I know he is a pretty good friend of black milk, so I'm sure he spoke to him about doing it. And the fact that black milk was cool enough to come by and do something. It's awesome. It's very awesome. Also, if you haven't heard of losing out by black milk, that's a song to listen to. That's a bop. Any thoughts on the kits? I, I've realized that with going with the USL, they're going to kind of take away some of the creative, create, creative freedom that they've had in the past. So I know that some of the kids are going to have to look a bit more uniform, more in style with the rest of the other teams in the league. But I like them. What, what, what does that mean? Because I look at these kits and I'm like, it's a soccer kit. I mean, they look good, but nothing about them to me looks crazier off-putting or something when it comes to like the overall design i mean in the sense that like it's not it's not it's not as crazy as it could have been like there are some concepts that have been dropped drawn some mock-ups dcfc is notorious for not having super crazy kits because they've been very you know safe for the camos for veteran day which and then the, the black smokes yeah, safe, safe for those like moments. They've been pretty uniform in their kits, so I, it wouldn't really affect DCFC as much. But just I feel weird about leagues that kind of mandate your kits should look somewhat like this. They don't have to look entirely like this. But they should look something like this, so we can have like you know a more uniform sense. So I was a little bit you know saddened to hear that. But I mean, their kits still came out nice. Uh, I'm not really a, a soccer jersey type wearer if it's not my own jersey. I, I don't really wear it, so I'm not. This doesn't it really isn't up my alley at all. But I think they're a really well designed kit. Shameless plug: You were wearing a Daily Detroit kit because fans can win tickets at DailyDetroit.com/slash/WinDCFC. That's right; those are still out there. I gave my left knee for it, so you better go and enter into the contest. <laughs> We will be drawing that on March 8th. Shameless plug. All right, let's get back to it. We have some preseason news to get through. There is a trialist 
who shall remain unnamed, that caught a lot of people's attention for their goal-scoring abilities, adding a little bit of the firepower that you and I had been talking about. And uh, before we get into that, why are we saying trialist? Why aren't we saying who it is? Although you and I, I think, have some strong theories on who it is. Why aren't we saying it? Well, I don't have any theories. I know exactly who it is, and I'm not telling it. And the reason why I'm not telling it <laughs> is because he has not been formally signed by the team. There's been some interest. He's there on a, he's there on a trial. So kind of like a, a contract for like, hey, we'll see if this works out during the preseason. If it does work out, we'll go through the actual full contract of signing you. Uh, so he, as of now, he's not technically, he's a DCFC like trialist. He's not a DCFC player. If the season were to start right now, he would not be on the roster. In order to have everything work out, the, the U.S. Soccer Federation needs to do okay stuff. The league needs to do okay stuff. There's a lot of pending stuff. If it's an international player, their federation needs to do okay stuff, even, even if they've been playing in the U.S. So like, it's very much like a lot of red tape that just... And even announcing who it is, like if it's someone on Twitter just says his name, it's fine. But like if someone who's a media person, no matter how big or how small, says his name out there and it gets out and could potentially jeopardize whatever's happening, you'd feel like a jerk. So like I would feel like a jerk. I have my sources who kind of tip my ear to it beforehand. I will say it's someone I thought DCFC should sign in the first place. So uh, it makes me feel good. Good that they actually heard me. You know, I'm glad that you have more of an idea than I do, because for me, it was still just a suspicion. So let's talk about that impact. Uh, what did that goal scoring look like? Because when I read the recaps, I was like, oh, this is what we've been looking for. Yeah. So it was a 2-2 draw against Phoenix Rising FC. The first goal was really more of a mistake. It was a back pass by back pass by the Phoenix back line that fell to Antoine Hopino, who turned open to his right and rolled a pass onto the f- foot of the trialist, who just slammed it home. Uh, the second goal was played out in the left wing to another DCFC trialist, who got to the top of the box and flicked across in, and then the initial trialist uh, tapped it home to give himself two goals on the game. Very, very good showing. Uh, good pace. And yeah, I think DCFC would be smart, as I said earlier, and I said now, to sign him because he's a very good, talented player that uh, found his way to this club. I'm just going to say that whenever I hear the trialist, I think of like a lawyer who's a superhero. Like, I am the trialist and I will try every case known to man. Anyway, I'll stop being a geek. Let- <laughs> I will say uh, the reason why I was a 2-2 uh, instead of a 2 nothing victory Uh, The first goal that Phoenix Rising scored, one of their wings, Epps, got out there. And honestly, I love him for playing Brad Dunwell. But he turned Brad Dunwell into a human pretzel before he went right around him and slotted a ball towards the net. And it found its way into the back of the net off of two DCFC defenders, Devin Amumensa and Stephen Carroll, before it got right past Nain Steinwasher for an own goal. The second goal came from Kevin Flood of uh, Phoenix Rising. and honestly. He hit an amazing missile from like 20, 25 yards. Like he hit it cleanly, curved right into the top right corner, and nothing could have done about it. It's picture perfect. Nate dove for it, got over his hand into the top. Like there's nothing that's if the ball goes in. You're just like, okay, well. Well, that gets to that point of why we need firepower because when you're at this league, you got a lot more people who can pull that kind of shot off. Yes. So let's talk about a couple of Detroit City FC alumni. First off, Roddy Green landed at Chattanooga FC. I'm sorry, Fletcher, but I'm going to have to ask you some things about Nisa. I know we all just kind of erased that from our brain. So I understand if you're a little foggy. I know I am. Yeah, I mean, if I don't have to cover something, I don't care about it. That's, you know, that's the journalist creed. You only have a little (laughs) bit of brain power left. You got to use it for what you need it for. But I'm really happy for Roddy. He found a team in need on the wings that uh, will appreciate him as will the fans in Chattanooga FC of all the teams left in Nisa, they're the most similar to, to to Detroit city in terms of how they're built in terms of how their fans appreciate the team in terms of how they give back to the community. So not only are they getting a great player on the field, they're also getting a great player off the field, which is the mark of a player for me, honestly. Um, he's going in a really good situation. He is with one of the best coaches in the league, if not the best coach, one of the more underappreciated coaches in U S soccer and Rod Underwood, who used to coach at Stumptown AC before they kind of just folded uh, as the league's team. I'm really happy for them. and I'm happy for him. And honestly, I think he gives them the nudge they need to potentially win the league. And I'm not just saying that because it's someone that I know, but like 
Uh, Chattanooga was always almost there, but they were just missing a few things. They got a coach. They got a keeper and Kevin Gonzalez. They got Roddy. Yeah. And in a league without Detroit City FC, the doors are a lot more open. Definitely. Sean Claude Lawson is a name that I hadn't heard in a while. And I notice he's at a semi pro club, Simcoe County Rovers in fabulous Barry, Ontario. What on earth happened? I thought he was doing something else. How's he at a semi pro club? He was playing for Athletic Atleti Ottawa in the Canadian Premier League. And honestly, he just didn't have a great year. He p- appeared in eight games, scored zero goals, um, which is very unlike the Sean Claude Lawson that we all know. And they agreed to mutually part ways and not renew his contract for the following year, which stinks. Being released or cut never feels good. So yeah, he's taking some time to collect himself at a League One team. And yeah, he, he'll, he'll do great things. He... He has a pretty solid nucleus of that team. They're an expansion team, and they're a hungry team. Uh, I think he'll be fine. All right, some breaking news as we are recording this podcast episode. Statement out from Detroit City FC about a dropping of a sponsor. And I quote, After feedback and deliberation, Detroit City FC and Bang Energy have mutually agreed not to pursue a partnership for the 2022 season to foster a deeper understanding of our outreach strategy DCFC looks forward to opening up a discussion at the next owner's meeting on the topic of partnerships. As an organization, DCFC has always valued financial sustainability, and our sponsorship portfolio is an essential aspect of that. Of equal importance is the esteem of our fans and supporters in our community and around the world. So uh, I did a little bit of uh, quick looking at what is going on because Bang appeared on the sleeves of the kits at the kit reveal To help figure this all out, I'm just going to go ahead and pull up a tweet from Northern Guard supporters, which is, of course, the largest and the the, the big deal supporter organization for DCFC. And you're going to hear some beeps here. Now that the fun of last night is over, we need to address the sleeve sponsor on the new kits. Bang Energy is a mega backing COVID denying dumpster of a company, and it sucks that they'll be associated with our club, them and their CEO forever. Additionally, and I was doing some research on this on the fly, they have been brought into court for allegations that their owner, VPX Sport, is falsely claiming Bang can help cure Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, Huntington's, and other forms of dementia. A piece in Esquire says that the monster suit, now to be clear, monster is a competitor in a way to Bang, VPX apparently made the assertion that Bang can, quote, reverse mental retardation, unquote. That's their words, not mine. This is an article from 2018. So controversial company, not going on the sleeve. Fletcher, any quick thoughts? Based on the article you said, I can tell you from the few times I've had bang, it does not do that. So I don't even know why they <laughs> thought they, don't even know why they thought the need to be like, it cures these things. If anything, if I drink one of those, I want to go run my head into a wall and be like, let's go very loudly for no reason. So I, I that's wild to me. But on the more local aspect of it, DCFC is probably walking away from a fair amount of money, like a fair decent sum of money uh with this partnership it shows that they listen to their fans and that they actually care and it's already kind of weird as it is for them to to partner with a product like this given that they have the public things they've said in terms of social justice in terms of just political correctness and such to partner with a, with, a, with a company that has at least two times very publicly shown that they do not have the same vibes uh, as the kids would say so to see them listen to the fans and go, you know what? This is not for us. Good on them because they're walking away. It shows that it's not about money. Like they could just say, you guys suck it up for the year, whatever. But they're choosing to walk away from it, which is going to cost them probably some sponsorship money in terms of, you know, with Bang. It's going to cost them kit money to have the logo removed from the jersey, most likely. It's good for them in the long run. Right now, it's probably going to suck uh, financially. But in the long run, I think it's going to be a good thing. All right, finally, the Milk Cup. Fletcher, you're really involved in this. This is something you're passionate about. Why don't you give me a baseline on what it is? You haven't been able to stop talking about it all week. So why don't you tell the people? The Milk Cup is a competition open to semi-pro and amateur clubs around the state of Michigan, sponsored by the Got Milk people, the, like, the people who actually are like the milk company and the farmers and such. And it is a competition that... I think is cool because it gives you a way to see some of the stars of tomorrow playing against all the teams in Michigan. Yes, while there are a bunch of teams in Michigan in lower leagues, some of those leagues are different leagues, obviously, so they don't get to play each other all the time. So you get to see teams like 
Lansing United of old, which are now be Lansing Common, AFC and Arbor. But you could see these clubs joining up to play, and there's going to be a men and women's tournament. The winning team gets five thousand dollars. The runner up gets fifteen hundred, and that's a big deal for that level, right? Especially, yeah, you're not professional clubs. You're not making money hand over foot for attendance. You might maybe have maybe. 400, 500 people come to your game, but all that money they make from that has to go into like concessions and keeping the stadium you have open. It's, if you, if you're, it's not yours. If you're renting, you have to then pay for that. So like, it's a bunch of stuff you have to do to like make money. So getting a nice cash infusion like that is very helpful. And like I said, you get to see some, some of the stars of tomorrow. One example for sure, Dewan Jones, who's currently a winger for the New England Revolution, who I was going to try to interview and I wondered why I wanted to go talk to him. Why they kept telling me he wasn't with the team. Turns out he got called up to the U.S. national team literally like the day after I tried to interview him. Um, he got hurt and had to come back, but like that's a big thing. He's from Lansing, Michigan. Um, so yes, that's a hometown hero who you get to watch the Milk Cup play and do some really great things. Now he's in the national spotlight. So when is all this going to kick off? Um, they're still signing up teams. Uh, for the official competition, but the women's side first round games must be completed by the 14th of May and the men's side must be completed by the 4th. All right, and we are done for today. Thank you so much for listening to your Daily Detroit. We are getting closer to the regular season open. We also know that the U.S. Open Cup will be starting April 5th against Michigan Star. So, more action coming our way. Another shameless plug. We're also getting closer to the raffle being over. So if you really want those season tickets, you probably should enter, especially because, as I've said many times, and we'll keep saying it, I literally gave my left knee to give someone the opportunity to do this. Right. Season tickets, dailydetroit.com slash win the CFC. With that, I'm Jer Stays. And I'm Fletcher Sharp. Take care of each other, and we'll see you around Detroit.